I'd like to thank everybody for joining us here on a What's Up Prince William for our community conversations. Today we have Eric Voth from the International Academy on the Science and Impact of Cannabis. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your organization? Well, you bet. Uh, Isaac, which is what we refer to it as, is really a group of professionals, mostly physicians, that are really concerned about the marijuana issue. Uh, we pulled together earlier this year after all of us have had decades of experience and we thought, you know, we need to get the medical message out so that people, you know, have knowledge about the effects and also uh, employers would have knowledge about what some of their employees may be going through and really provide a reliable, responsible uh, resource to the public because that's just not out there. It's very difficult. Uh, to, to hunt down a lot of the medical information. And uh, the marijuana lobby has done such a, uh, a, an effective job, I wouldn't say a great job, but an effective job of pushing marijuana as essentially safe and great recreational drug and, oh, don't worry about it. And, and they've really manipulated society the same way the tobacco industry did back in the 50s and 40s. In fact, they probably took most of their uh, uh, processes and, and uh, projects right out of the tobacco playbook. Gotcha. So um, uh, your website has quite a bit of information on it and links to information. Uh, what are some of the um, risks that um, you are finding uh, with marijuana usage? Well, it's pretty remarkable the extensive uh, number of problems that marijuana use has. Now, obviously someone who just has a little bit of low grade, very rare use is not going to experience many of these things, but acutely effects on driving are a big one. Uh, one of the, the things that we've seen in many of the states that either went to medical marijuana or legalized totally uh, was the immediate uh, increase in uh, motor vehicle fatalities not just accidents. But certainly uh, great examples are California, Colorado, they're still tracking that huge increases. Uh, the other part that, that's really been striking, I would say, is over the last probably 10 to 15 years, the incidence of acute problems like acute psychotic episodes that maybe went away or went then on to develop into acute manic episodes, acute schizophrenia, that kind of thing, and uh, a lot of violent episodes. Uh, we've seen all sorts of violence showing up in the, in the literature and in the research. Uh, spousal violence, just plain fighting, screaming. Um, uh, actually, some murder episodes. Uh, and personally, I've been extremely concerned about a lot of this violence we've seen around the country young males, the classic example of the demographic that uses a lot of marijuana, um, getting involved in, in significant violent episodes. So then, you know, chronically, you're, you're looking at uh, certainly a cannabis use disorder uh, that has been clearly characterized now that's that habituated use like addiction, like you'd uh, consider with other drugs and a, a relative inability to just stop it. Uh, there are withdrawal symptoms that people show, et cetera. So, you know, the big picture there is it's not a safe drug. Uh, it's a serious drug of abuse. It's playing right into a lot of the social difficulties that we're seeing out there. And uh, we at Isaac uh, pulled together to really try to, to get that out to the public to try to get it out to our medical colleagues because a lot of the medical colleagues uh, are not well educated on marijuana either. That's, right. That's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> right. So uh, one of the things that we talk about, uh, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot, um, I'll just call it in social media, uh, the benefits of marijuana usage or the CBD, the oils, um, they're how does that kind of come into play with that? But also, you, you know, you're talking, you know, saw it on your website, people may not know what they're getting when they're getting those. Well, first of all, separate out marijuana from CBD. You know, cannabidiol is a constituent in marijuana, 
but pure CBD may have some other therapeutic elements to it. Again, even there, because it's not brought through the FDA and because there's no standards for purity or what uh, percentages are effective for therapeutic, it's just getting a pig in a poke. Uh, if you go into these stores around, you know, the, the dispensaries, you don't see, you know, 10% THC, X percent CBD, X percent, you'll say, oh, high THC, low this, high that, really good shit. I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole world that is absolutely foreign to medicine. And to call it medicine is really a sham. So first comment there is, there are FDA approved THC derivatives on the market that are reliable, responsible, and shoot, I prescribe them to uh, folks for certain things. Mm -hmm. Second issue is all of this, quote, beneficial stuff that hits social media. I just say, you know, th those are observations. If they think they're really, really seriously going to be beneficial, it's got to go through the FDA. The FDA has to systematically test it, systematically research it at specific dose levels, and then turn it into a medicine that can be used by the public. And by the way, I've never seen any medication ever smoked for anything. I mean, you don't take your blood pressure medicines that way. You don't take your cholesterol medicines that way. You don't take your psychiatric medicines that way. I mean, so there are just so many flaws in that whole process of medical marijuana uh, that I think that part needs to be absolutely eliminated. And then if you want to talk about recreational pot, whole different issue. Gotcha. The, um, so when it comes to, uh, I'm just going to bring up like, you know, the uh, FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, sure. they have a pretty regimented um, outline on um, uh, basically no drug usage, usage testing, basically for the safety of, um, you know, the um, uh, travelers. Um, you know, a lot of people do not want people who have been smoking marijuana working on their aircraft. Um, and it doesn't seem like they've actually changed those rules as the marijuana rules have been changing here, in, you know, in the regular civilian part of the field area. Um, have you seen anything where marijuana usage in your study is ha where is affecting um, industries or um, other industrial type bu uh, businesses? Well, you bet. There, there's kind of two sides and two elements of that discussion. One is what happens to industries that have uh, employees that use pot, uh, more injuries, more job injuries, more mistakes, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And then when you get into a transportation industry that's so critical and me needs people to be so perfect like aviation. I mean, that's just got to be a zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a pilot and I guarantee you, I don't want to be stoned anywhere near the time that I fly a plane. And any responsible pilot uh, should certainly have that kind of a, an attitude. So that's one. But the other issue is in trying to have a drug-free workforce, We've been finding all over the country that we have this already diminished workforce. <clears throat> and now it's hard for businesses and industries to find drug free individuals to hire. So now you have this quandary. Do we just quit drug testing? Oh, that'd be a terrible mistake. Then you got a bunch of stoners, you know, assembling aircraft and, and automobiles and working, you know, in your uh, carpentry businesses, which probably are anyway, getting injured. So uh, that's got a long tail on it and a really serious impact on business and industry. You know, because, um, you know, just with our, you know, with, um, with our experience, um, unfortunately, those who we have found to have been uh, marijuana smokers were generally the ones who didn't always tighten up the bolts. You know, well, and, uh, that's been, good that's science on that. I mean, that, that data exists that, yes, uh, there are more mistakes more injuries, et cetera, uh, in that regard. And to that point, I think businesses and industries are completely justified in requiring clean drug screens. And uh, I, I do appreciate you being with us today. Is there anything else um, that you would just like to add 
um, before we go today? Well, the first one being separate the issues of medical marijuana and what is a medicine from recreational stuff. And that whole issue of using it as a medicine is really a ruse to get the, the public behind it and to support the legalization processes. And as we see people marching down the, the legalization pathway, you follow behind that and you just see more and more social problems, medical problems, psychiatric problems. And we need to find a way to roll that back. Uh, and I would encourage people that aren't smoking pot, that are thinking about smoking pot, to just stay away from it. Good gosh, you know, there's other ways to have fun and there's other intoxicants if that's necessary. But, but pot is a real serious problem for us. Well, very good. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, I'm sure as this goes on, uh, we very well may be talking here in the very near future <laughs> about some different issues or different parts of this issue. And I'd encourage you to go to our website and, uh, and look at uh, the information we have there because that's all state-of-the-art uh, literature right out of, of all the medical literature. Great. We sure will. We're, we will definitely put this link uh, along with the article and everything so people can check it out for themselves. Very good. Thank you. And thank you very much for being with us today. Take care.